Hello fitness fam. Today we're going to discuss why your legs might be lacking and the five reasons why. When it comes to sculpting that jaw-dropping form, certain muscle groups immediately steal the spotlight. Think chiseled chest, majestic shoulders, and arms that could rival Greek statues. Dive into any corner of YouTube where the quest for attractiveness is discussed, and you'll hear echoes of shoulders and arms as the crowd pleasers. It's no wonder many gym enthusiasts pour their sweat into these areas, occasionally leaving their leg days in the dust. Let's be real. Unless you're flaunting your thigh muscles in short shorts or competing where every muscle counts, it's tempting to let leg workouts take the back seat. But here's the twist. We're the enlightened bunch, the gym goers who chase the dream of a harmonious physique where every muscle, including those elusive legs, gets its moment in the sun. So why do so many of us hit a wall when it comes to leg day gains? Fear not, for we're about to embark on a mission to uncover the top five culprits behind stunted leg growth, and more importantly, how to kickstart your journey to leg glory. Get ready to give your legs the limelight they deserve and balance out that Herculean upper body with a foundation just as formidable. All right, let's dive into the first game changer for your leg day woes. Your workout routine needs a makeover. Picture this. Most gym warriors follow a classic split that targets one or two muscle groups each session sprinkled throughout the week. Sure, it's a tried and true method for many, but here's the kicker. It might just be the reason your legs are lagging behind. Let's break it down. Imagine a common four-day split. Day one is all about chest and triceps. Day two shifts to the back. Day three pumps up shoulders and biceps. And finally, day four is dedicated to legs. At first glance, it looks like a solid plan, right? But if you're playing the numbers game, that's three days bowing down to the upper body gods versus a single day for the lower body legion. And if you decide to throw in an extra day exclusively for arms, making it a five day extravaganza, that's when the imbalance really shows up to the party. Four days toasting to the upper body and only one lonely day for the legs. Here's the fix. Aim for a balanced workout regime that treats the upper and lower body as equals. You could go for a full body routine that spreads the love evenly or adopt an upper lower split that looks something like this. Day one is upper body, day two is lower body, day three takes you back to upper body, and day four rounds it off with another lower body session. This tweak in your training schedule isn't just a breath of fresh air, it's a turbo boost for your leg development. By giving your legs as much attention as the upper body, you're setting the stage for some serious lower body gains. Let's get those legs back in the spotlight where they belong. All right, gear up for leg day lesson number two. You might be playing mix and match with your exercises all wrong. Here's the scoop. Your leg gains are snoozing because you're not picking your exercises wisely. It's like going to a buffet and only filling your plate with salads. Sure, it's food, but you're missing out on the good stuff. The trap many fall into is thinking about leg exercises in a one-size-fits-all way. Let's say your leg day looks like this. Squats, then leg press with the same stance as your squats, followed by lunges and capped off with leg extensions. Sounds intense, right? But here's the twist. This lineup is like a fan club for your quadriceps and leaves your hamstrings wondering if they were even invited to the party. So how do we fix this? First, let's get friendly with what we're working with. Muscle anatomy and function are your BFFs here. Knowing which muscle does what is key. It's like knowing the players on your team. You've got your quads playing offense on knee extension hamstrings doubling as hip benders and knee flexors, and calves pumping up the crowd with foot and ankle moves. When you're picking exercises, think about giving every player some field time. Quads get their kicks from moves like leg presses and extensions. Hamstrings thrive on exercises that bend the hips and knees, doing the heavy lifting on knee flexion and hip extension. And don't forget your calves. They're in for the win with movements that have your legs straight or bent. By choosing exercises that tick all these boxes, you're setting up a leg day that's balanced, effective, and sure to wake up those sleeping leg gains. Think of it as drafting your dream team for leg growth. Every muscle gets to play, ensuring well-rounded results that'll have you strutting in no time. All right, let's tackle reason number three. You might not be seeing those leg gains. You're too hooked on hitting a new one rep max every leg day. It's like treating every workout as if it's the grand finale of a powerlifting championship. Aiming for a squat PR every session sounds heroic, but here's the twist. It's actually holding back your quest for more muscular legs, especially once you're past the newbie gain stage. Here's the deal. When you're laser-focused on breaking records, 
every set leading up to that momentous lift becomes just a warm-up act. You're saving all your energy for the big show, which means you're not giving your all in the sets that lead up to it. Imagine only giving it your all for one set, instead of going full throttle for three, four, or five sets. So what's the game plan? Time to let go of the weightlifting ego a bit. Forget about outdoing your last max every time you step into the squat rack. Instead, spread that effort across all your sets, not just the headliner. By increasing your reps and maintaining consistent effort throughout, you're signing up for more time under tension and a heftier total workout load. This strategy is a ticket to leg Gainesville. Sure, you can still have your moments of glory and test your max now and then to gauge your strength progress, but make the bulk of your leg days about pushing hard across all sets, not just the showstopper. This shift in focus from maxing out to maximizing effort on every set will light up those leg muscles in ways a one-rep wonder never could. Time to tackle reason number four, why those leg gains might be playing hard to get. Your cardio game is, well, not great, let's be real. Cranking out a dozen squats, Pressing your way through leg presses or tackling Romanian deadlifts beyond the 8 to 10 rep range is like a full-on assault on your muscles and your lungs. So when you're gasping for air mid-set, is it because your muscles are waving the white flag? Or are you just winded? Here's a thought. If you're panting like you've just sprinted for the bus by your third set of leg presses, it might be time to give your cardio a boost. Why? Because it shouldn't be your lungs dictating when your set ends. Incorporating some high-intensity interval training HIT into your routine, maybe a couple of times a week post-lifting or on your off days, could be a game-changer. This isn't just about being able to brag about your cardio prowess, it's about conditioning your body to handle the demands of a heavy leg session without turning into a breathless mess. As you start to improve your cardio, you'll notice something awesome. Those between-set breathers get shorter, you're not huffing and puffing after every rep, and suddenly, you've got more in the tank to really push those leg muscles to their limits. Better cardio equals better recovery, more reps, and yep, you guessed it, more growth. So let's not let a little thing like running out of breath stand in the way of those leg day victories. And here we are rounding off with reason number five. You're letting genetics call the shots. Ever look down after a heavy leg session and thought, hello, upper body gains, decent quads and hamstrings, but where's the calf love? Yep, it's the classic case of team no calves making you wonder if your genetics decided to skip leg day. But here's the kicker. While you can't swap your DNA, you don't have to let it be the boss of you. Relying on genetics as an excuse? Not on our watch. It's time to double down on your training frequency to coax those stubborn muscles into the spotlight. Think your calves are just not that into growing? Throw in a few extra sets of calf raises on your non-leg days. For instance, if you're rocking a push-pull legs routine, Sneak in four sets of calf raises on a push or pull day. These extra credits can make a world of difference over time. This strategy isn't just for calves though. Any muscle group that's lagging behind can benefit from a little extra attention. Adding work on fresh days not only revives those muscles but also pumps up your total weekly volume significantly. So let's wrap this up with a quick recap of our roadmap to leg day glory. Choose the right training plan. Balance is key. Mix up your exercises. Diversity for the win. Ease up on the max outs. Quality over one shot wonders. Boost your cardio. Keep those lungs in check. Up your frequency. Don't let genetics be your scapegoat. Armed with these five strategies, your legs have no choice but to step up their game. Get ready for growth that'll make you rethink the limits of your leg day potential. And there you have it, folks. The lowdown on the top five reasons your legs might be stuck in neutral and how to kick things into high gear. From shaking up your routine to giving those calves some extra love, it's all about making every rep, every set, and every sweaty moment count. Remember, whether it's tweaking your training plan, diversifying those leg workouts, or just stepping up your cardio game, the power to build those dream legs is in your hands, or should we say your legs. So don't let a little thing like genetics or a one-track workout plan hold you back. With these tips, you're well on your way to turning those leg day blues into a leg day breakthrough. Keep pushing, keep challenging yourself, and most importantly, keep flexing and glowing. Here's to leg gains that won't quit.